How do you think? That's a tough question, right? How do you actually think? What processes go inside your mind that have you speak, that have you come up with an idea, <clears throat> that have you make a decision? <clears throat> and how often do you think about thinking? How often do you track how your thoughts go? What kind of thoughts do you have? Do you see pictures? Do you think in concepts? Do you uh, wonder in a new imaginative, imaginative way? Thinking is, is something that's always occurring, but we never really talk about how we think with others. I think many of us have learned to hide our true thoughts and feelings just to make sure we're safe just to make sure that we're not letting out something which maybe other people wouldn't like or wouldn't agree with. So we have a habit of coming into a sort of a social agreement about things, but keeping our inner thinking and feelings to ourself. And yet if we want to reformat our mind, if we want to change how we think, if we want to introduce new ideas, new concepts, perhaps even a new operating system. It takes having a lot of self-reflection about how you organize ideas, information, files, pictures in your mind. Now, the tool that we most use to kind of think in a sense is the computer and using programs and using a filing system and organizing information in such a manner that we can find it. But as you know, on the computer, it can get more and more complicated. You can get more and more programs. You can start developing multi layers in your filing systems to the point where you can't remember where certain information is. And that's the computer. And that's with file systems you can see. But when you go into your mind, we don't, we don't have these conceptual categorizational systems, at least most of us don't. And we sort of just have instant retrieval if we have a good memory, or it takes us a while, or we may never even remember again something that we've lost because we have no methodology in our own thinking to recognize significance and to sort of put all the best things in one place. And the same is true in computers and information. And if you're a creator or an inventor, or you work a lot with information as a scientist or some sort of knowledge worker, you realize at some point over years and years and years, you have this vast repository of files and documents that you may or may not realize the value of. Maybe you came up with something, you know, 25 years ago, that's that was the best idea you've ever seen, but slowly over time, you sort of forgot about it. And right now, it, nothing is happening with it. And so one thing that the inflow matrix is, is it's a ideal operating system for a business. It's a way to start to reorganize your inner conceptual world with your outer organizational world, and then you have the real world. And so we're learning to work with many levels. We're, we're learning to work with many perspectives, but the maps we've been given conceptually have not been able to connect together in a larger holistic system where you could begin to see how the parts connect together at different levels and different perspectives. And so what the inflow matrix is, is a series of maps that you learn to memorize. And then these maps are what you use to categorize your business thinking system that's within you. And then you use that to organize your business thinking system that is outside of you, connected onto your computer, and then connected onto the internet. Now, 
my guess is you're already in overwhelm. You're already going, this is too much. But you have to learn things in pieces and you have to learn things a step at a time. And so what this is, is just a basic explanation of how the inflow matrix can help you to organize your business. This map is called the Synergy Wheel and is one of four wheels that provide the primary interface for the inflow matrix operating system. So this is at the level of the organization. Now, if we look at 3.1, the purple wheel, research, then we go down to the blue wheel, 3.2, which is infrastructure. Then we go to the aquamarine wheel at 3.3, which is learning and human resources. And at 3.4, the green wheel, we have operations. At 3.5, the yellow wheel, we have creativity. At 3.6, we have synergy and customer service. At 3.7, we have orange and services. And synergy and customer service was pink, by the way. And then at marketing, at the red wheel, we have marketing and interfacing, 3.8. And at 3.9, at Magenta, we have stewardship and management. And in the center at 3B, we have communication. So each of these 10 wheels are a function of a business. And if you see there's two words, like stewardship and management, the bottom word is the old paradigm word, and the top word is the new paradigm word. The bottom of, of marketing is the old paradigm and interfacing is the new paradigm. Customer service is the old paradigm and synergy is the new paradigm. Uh, human resources is the old paradigm and learning is the new paradigm. And so what we're doing is we're first taking these universal functions for a business and we're placing it on a circle. And this is meant to be a model that you can use in your mind that you can then look at any other business and you can start to see, well, what are the different pieces and the different parts of this business? And the whole business is revolving around these functions, whether we know it or not, whether we understand it or not, but if you want to understand business and if you want to have a, a business that takes into account everything that is necessary, it's good to have a holistic model in your mind that then can be applied to any context. Now, this particular model, you can program and custom design for your business. And when you do that, you, you get access to all of the different tools, all of the different maps, everything that's created in the new paradigm toolkit that supports the inflow matrix operating system. And in the new paradigm toolkit, what we have are maps, card sets, game boards, processes, and software. And so this is just a, a little jump into the inflow matrix and showing the synergy wheel and giving you an idea that you can start to program your mind to come up with an, an ideal business system and an ideal job that you are fitting within. This is the beginning of you creating a shared knowledge network in your mind that then you use the maps to online and offline connect with other people in your shared knowledge communities and teams at the lower level to basically interact in commerce in the new paradigm. So this is the paradigm map where you are choosing between the old paradigm based upon fear and the new paradigm based upon love. And looking at that synergy wheel fits in the new paradigm in a manner I will show you. Now, if we look here, at the uh, new paradigm, we have four levels. We have the inner individual, we have the outer individual, we have the inner group, and we have the outer group. And each one of these levels has a wheel that is the primary interface in the inflow matrix for that. So here at the inner individual inside of you, you have the inner, you have the choice wheel. At the outer individual, you have the flow wheel. 
at the inner group, you have the synergy wheel. And at the outer group, you have the harmony wheel. So the synergy wheel, which I just showed you, is this wheel right here, the red one. And that is the uh, organizational functional wheel. So next, I'm going to show you the flow wheel, which is the outer individual. And the words are more in alignment with that. Check the next video to find out how this, the flow map, connects to the synergy map and what it is.